What's up guys? It's Kat and Callie. Say hi, baby. Today we're going to be going over 10 night routine mistakes that if you are doing these things, they're going to make it harder for you to have a good night routine and then in turn have a good morning routine. And y'all know how I feel about having a good morning routine. <laughs> I'm not making, oh, you're falling back. You're falling. You're falling. I've actually done a part one and a part two of morning routine mistakes. So I'll have both of those linked in the description. And my sister actually gave me the idea to do a night routine mistakes video. So that's what we're going to do today. So number one may be sad for a lot of y'all. I know it's kind of sad for me, <laughs> but I have learned that if I have caffeine after like two o'clock p.m. I cannot fall asleep on time. I just get so jittery and like da -da 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 -da. even if I have no caffeine all day and then at three o'clock I'm sitting at my desk at work and I'm like oh I need caffeine I need something to wake me up. If I have a cup of coffee I know that it's going to affect my ability to fall asleep and this goes for any type of caffeine. I mean I'm not really an energy drinker but if you are somebody who likes energy drinks I highly highly recommend not having them at like six hours before you go to sleep because that's about how long it takes for the caffeine to leave your system. Okay, so this next one is letting a bad day affect your night routine. So if you had a really lousy day, what, for whatever reason, maybe you're just not feeling so great, maybe you had your period, so you're just like not in a good mood, <laughs> or maybe you found out some bad news, whatever it is, letting that negativity from the day affect your night routine. And I know this can be super difficult not to do, but if you can think of your night routine as a fresh start and a way to say, okay, I know I had a kind of sucky day, but I can push that to the side because it's in the past now, it's, it's irrelevant. And I can focus on having a positive night routine and focusing on myself, focusing on my goals and setting myself up to have an even better day tomorrow, then you're gonna be way better off. So this next one is when you get home from work or school or wherever you were all day, if you immediately continue to do more work, that's not good for you either. You need to give your brain a little bit of a rest. So I recommend having a snack if you live with a roommate or your family, you know, sitting down talking with your mom or your friend or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, having a conversation. If you live alone, maybe you could FaceTime a friend while you eat your after work or after school snack. Unless of course you've had a day where it's like, okay, I just need to take a step back. I need to not interact with anybody and have some time for myself. And normally I would say it's a horrible idea to watch a Netflix show or go on YouTube before you start being productive at your night routine. But if you've had a really, really sucky day, sometimes you get home and you just need that time to sit and not communicate with anybody and just have some time for yourself. I know I have those days. So what I recommend doing if that's the case is pick a YouTube video or a Netflix show that's like 20 minutes, no longer than 20 minutes, and then have your snack while you watch your show. And once that show is over, you close your computer, and you go on to do something productive. And this will require a little bit of willpower so that after that show is over, you don't just keep watching new ones and you could close your computer and go on to do something else. But I totally understand that sometimes you need a little time to yourself to just relax and not focus on anything else and not focus on work and not focus on talking with other people. And that's totally okay. If that's what's gonna help you to have a good rest of your night, then do it. So this one may contradict what I said, but not really because I did give y'all a time limit for how long to relax for, but it is to wait too long to get back to work. So, you know, you get home and you sit down to watch a Netflix show and one Netflix show turns into like five Netflix shows. Well, you didn't get anything done. <laughs> like I said, if you get home and you need a little bit of time to, before you dive into being productive again, that's totally fine. But don't wait too long because the longer you wait, the less likely it is that you're gonna get to work and the less time you'll have for work. And if you're like me and you work a full-time job or you're a full-time student and you also have a side hustle or a passion project on the side that you're working on, those hours after work do matter. They're really, really important and useful for you. So you want to take advantage of them. And if you get home and you get sucked into YouTube or Netflix, well, there, you just lost a lot of time that you could have spent that would be really, really valuable for you. Now we do have six more tips coming. I just wanted to quickly say, if you're enjoying this video so far and finding it helpful in any way, I would love, love, love if you considered subscribing and give it a big thumbs up. That really does help me out and it helps more people find the video. So yeah, also you can follow me on Instagram. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> okay, so this next night routine mistake you may be making is having dinner too late. Like for me, I like to have dinner 
at least two hours before I'm gonna go to bed. Just because I find if I have dinner and then go to lie down, you need to give your body time to digest, you know, like let the food process do its thing. You know what I mean? So I recommend giving yourself at least like two to three hours. And a lot of times I will have a little snack. I think like some almonds, some crackers with cheese, something like that, or like a rice cake with some peanut butter. Those are some good before bed snacks. But I definitely suggest not having like a big full on meal within like two hours of bedtime. And kind of going along with that, it's the same thing with water. I try and stop drinking any water like an hour before bed. I'm drinking a ton of water. I'm gonna be waking up a bunch during the night and having to go pee and I hate that. So I find if I stop drinking water an hour before bed, it like eliminates me having to wake up every five seconds during the night to go pee and I actually sleep through the night and then in turn, I'm more rested in the morning. And you know, obviously if it's 15 minutes before you go to bed and you're super, super thirsty, don't say, nope, I can't have that water, can't do it drink the water. And also, if you drink enough water during the day, then you shouldn't be feeling super thirsty at night because when you feel thirsty, it's your body telling you you're already dehydrated. So make sure you hydrate yourself during the day so that that hour before bed, you can stop drinking and it'll be easier to sleep through the night. If you're watching this right now, comment, Callie is adorable. So this next mistake you may be making, and I know it's so darn difficult not to do this, especially if it's like a cold winter night and you wanna get all cozy and turn up the heat before bed, and then you crawl in, it's super cozy and comfy, but no, that's actually bad. It's actually said that you get a better night's sleep in cooler temperatures than if it's really hot. And think about it, that makes sense. You wake up on, like in the middle of the night and you're like, oh my God, I'm so hot, you're sweating, you feel so gross. It's a lot easier for your body to wake up. Whereas if it's a little bit cooler and you have a nice comfy blanket and you're still cozy, but the air you're breathing isn't super hot and dry, it's gonna really help. So if you can, try and avoid sleeping in hot and dry temperatures. You know, turn the heat down, turn the, hair, the air conditioning up if it's the summer, or turn a fan on and have it blowing on you. And then also something that Tim and I got recently is a humidifier, not a dehumidifier, a humidifier, because I find I wake up with such a dry mouth. Even if the air is cooler, it's still super dry, and that definitely affects how you sleep as well. The one Tim got was pretty inexpensive from Walmart, and it has helped so much. When I wake up in the morning, I find my mouth isn't dry. I feel a lot more refreshed. I feel like I slept better. I don't wake up as much in the middle of the night because I'm not like so dry. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so make sure the air is on the cooler side. And if you need a humidifier, get one because it will really, really improve the quality of your sleep. Okay, so just think about this. If you tell yourself from now on, I'm gonna go to sleep around 10 o'clock. What is the huge, huge, huge mistake in that sentence? I'll give you a minute to think about it. If you said around, you're correct. <laughs> By not being specific with yourself about what time you're going to go to sleep and what going to sleep means for you, it's gonna be a huge mistake because you're not gonna do it. And what I mean by that is here you're saying, I'm gonna go to bed around 10 p.m. Okay, go to bed. Does that mean that you're going to get in your bed at 10? Does that mean you're going to turn the light off around 10? Does that mean you're going to you know, do your night routine, like start doing your skincare routine at 10? Who knows that it's not specific and around 10, okay, is that 9.30, is that 10, is that 10.30, is that 11 o'clock? What does that mean? So what I recommend is you give yourself an hour long time block for your night routine. So for example, your routine may be at nine o'clock, I go to the bathroom and wash my face, brush my teeth, all of that stuff. And then at 10 o'clock, the light is turned off and I go to sleep. And then in between then, you, you, know, you do your bathroom stuff, maybe you read a little bit, whatever it is, but you're giving yourself a specific time and a specific action that you're going to take at that time so that there's no room for, mm, I think I want to watch this show for another 10 minutes, or I want to read this book for another 10 minutes, or, you know, I'm going to just not, I'm just not going to do what I have to do for myself to go to sleep. So don't make the mistake of not being specific, set a specific time and a specific action that you're going to take at that time. And then of course, the final time and action of that routine should be the time the lights are going to go off and you're going to sleep. Okay, so of course, I could sit here and say the next mistake that you're probably making because you know, 99.9% .9 of us do <laughs> before bed is going on your phone. But for all of us that do go on our phones, whether it's one night a week or seven nights a week, I have a little tip for you that is probably a mistake you may be making or you're, something that you're not doing that if you do, it's a good thing to do. <laughs> so if you go into the settings of your phone and select display and brightness, if you have an iPhone and then you go to night shift, you can literally set. So my night shift goes on at 9.03 and then it turns off at 6.33 a.m. So from those times, night shift will put a yellow or take out the blue light and put like a yellow tint on your
So if you are going to be going on your phone before bed, which, you know, I suggest you don't because you will get a better night's sleep if you don't. But if you do, I highly, highly recommend setting night shift to automatic so that you don't even think about it. It just goes on at a certain time. And this next mistake is trying to have the perfect night routine. And if you mess up and make one of these mistakes throughout your night routine, you're like, oh, well, that's it. Screw this. I'm not going to even try anymore. I'm going to go watch Netflix the rest of the night. That is a huge mistake because any progress that you did make, you literally just threw out the window. Obviously, you're going to make a mistake. All of these things are things I do, probably things that you do and things that are going to continue happening. But the way to success is by not giving up, not quitting and not saying, oh, well, you know, I made one mistake, so it doesn't matter. I can just continue to make them all, you know? Be realistic with yourself. Be patient with yourself. And if you are doing some of these things, be patient with yourself and work a little bit every day to break the habits and create new habits that are gonna be healthier for you. And in this video right here, which I'll have linked below, I take you through my entire night routine after work and I share with you nine different habits that I do from the second I finish work all the way till I go to sleep. And if you watch until this part, let me know in the comments what your bedtime is. And remember, don't say I want to start waking up around 10. No, I want to know I'm going to be turning the lights off at 10 p.m. every night from now on or on weekdays. I will have my how to wake up early playlist linked above me where you can find so many different videos about being a morning person. And I think that's about it for today. So I love y'all so, so much. And I will see you in my next video. And Callie says bye too.